you are all on mute right now. But um, how the program's going to work is the first 30 minutes um, is we're going to have a panel with our um, with our um, panelists, and they're going to share their um, information and experience with you. And then from there, in the last 30 minutes of the program, we're going to open out open up individual breakout rooms. And that's where you're going to be able to network and meet uh, more with the panelists so you can um, create more of that one on one connection. So without um, further ado, we're going to get into the portion where we're going to um, speak with our panelists and they're going to share more information. I have questions prepared, but if you have a question that you think would be great for the group, put it into the chat and I can definitely um, ask it. So um, we're going to get started with our panelists introducing themselves. So um, panelists, if you all could say your name, your title, and the company that you work for, and also um, a little fun fact about, you know, what is the TV show that you're currently binge watching or book that you're reading? So I'll get started with Arturo, um, and then um, from there, each of the panelists can jump in. Yeah, hello. So my name is Arturo Gomez, and I'm a corporate asset manager for a U.S. bank. And I have, um, I binged recently. I had already watched Peaky Blinders, but I rewatched it again just because um, they have like their last season on TV now. I mean, it hasn't aired on Netflix yet, but I think it's airing like in London or something. So I just wanted to kind of rewatch that and be all caught up for, for this last season. Nice. Thank you. And let's go next to Mia. Yes, hi, everybody. And uh, thank you for being here. My name is Mia Lau. And I'm currently the Vice President of Consumer Lending for Wings Financial Credit Union. I'm actually located in Minnesota. Um, I moved from California, but I still have my home there and my family. Um, binging on um, just Disney stuff, Mandalorian right now, Moon Knight. <laughs> And thank you for joining us with the time difference too in Minnesota. And hopefully it's not, <laughs> nine, not 90 no. degrees like it is here. So <laughs> um, it's actually pretty cold. It act, there were flurries of snow this morning, but um, it stopped. So snow is starting to go away. A little chilly still outside, but um, it's good. It's actually perfect time for me because I typically work late. So oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, and up next, let's have Veronica introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Veronica Zuniga and I am a senior AR analyst at PIMCO. Um, I'm currently not watching anything, uh, but I am reading a book. It's um, Ear Hustle and it's based on a podcast. Uh, so if you haven't listened to the podcast yet, go ahead and listen to it. It's a great podcast, one of my favorite. Um, and they just recently released, last September, they released their book um, with just different stories about life and, um, and about the criminal justice system specifically. And so um, it's just a compilation of stories and uh, the host, the uh, podcast hosts also have their own stories and they share them in the book. So it's a great book. Nice. There's always so many great books and podcasts out there. So love hearing that. And finally, we have Michael, if you could introduce yourself. Oh, Michael, you're on mute. I'm so sorry. This happens this way. My name is Michael. Uh, my last name is Jola. I mean, just like I was telling Michelle, don't worry if you cannot pronounce it. It's an African name. I, I came into the United States uh, about 16 years ago. So sometimes if you don't hear all that I'm saying, please, because of the accent, you can ask me again. Then I will take time to explain to you. I work as um, a vice president internal audit uh, with uh, CTBC Bank, uh, and I work uh, in Los Angeles on Pigoria by 8th Street. Uh, I've been in internal audit now for over 20 years. Uh, yeah, I think that pretty much is what you wanted to know. But before I became an internal auditor, I had worked for about 18 years uh, in banking. Uh, when I was in Nigeria, when a bank was in trouble, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria had appointed me to manage the place, I mean, to head the board of the, of the bank. 
uh, I managed the place for about three years as executive chairman for the bank. Great, thank you. Is there any TV shows or books that you're currently yeah, reading? Yeah, I, I really, I'm not really a kind of TV person. I Most of the things that I, I engage myself in faith-based organ organization outside my job, and if I want to read, I read basically things that has to do with uh, my professional job, internal audit. Very nice, thank you. Well, thank you again for our panelists and being here. So now we're gonna get into more of the questions. So I know you all said the role in the company that you work for, but could you expand a little bit on what does your role entail and what does a typical day look like for you in the position? So we'll get started with Veronica. <coughs> Um, so I think I caught all of it. Uh, you broke out a little bit. My internet connection is not that strong. So if I ask you to repeat things, I apologize. Um, I, I think you said what my role entails, correct? Yeah. What does your role entail and what does a typical day look like for you? Sure. So I just recently joined PEMCO um, a couple of months ago. So I'm still, I just finished the first phase of training recently, but I just, um, part of training with PEMCO is just going in there and just doing the work. So um, right now, since the end of the quarter just happened, I am um, doing a lot of billing. So working with clients, I'm managing about upwards of 200 accounts. Um, and so just depending on the situation itself, whether the account is billed quarterly, <coughs> monthly, whatever it is, and I'm working with the account, uh, with the account management team and with the account, the clients themselves, trying to make sure that the contract are being met um, and that we as well on our end that we're also meeting the contract requirements when it comes to managing their money. And based off of that, we're uh, building the client accordingly. So um, a lot of contracting losses work. I'm also doing a lot of billing work and uh, I'm on the accounts receivable side of things. So making sure the accounts are being, the bills are being paid off, the uh, client bills are being paid off. Um, oh, and then the second part I think was uh, what our what my day looks like. Every day is different. It's um, just very unexpected. Some days I'll have a quote unquote slower day where I'm only working on like 20, 30 accounts at a time, I'm only sending um, about 100 emails a day. But there are some days that are really busy. Um, I just recently talked to Arthur, I think yesterday, and I told them that on Monday, since that was the beginning of the end of the quarter, um, I was, I got to work, I worked from like seven to seven. So some days are really crazy, really busy. And um, those days, that's where I'm um, doing all the accruals. I'm doing the billing. I'm analyzing contracts, making sure that uh, contracts were met on the customer side, but also on our end. Thank you. Anyone else can jump in on what does your role entail and what does a typical day look like for you? I can be next if you'd like. So um, typical day for me, um, first I'd like to say that if ever you, a first lesson for um, uh, if you would like to uh, work for corporate, beware of internal auditors. I'm just joking, Michael. <laughs> um, I always have to work closely with our internal audit because I'm in consumer lending. <laughs> But a uh, typical day for me, um, I have to say 80% of my time is spent with meetings, 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 a lot of projects. Um, I think the higher level you go up in the chain of management, the more meetings that you will be involved, whether you like it or not. Um, uh, probably 20% of my meeting day is spent with um, vendors. There's a lot of projects that are going on. Um, probably 50% uh, of my meetings has to do with uh, existing projects for, for my group. Uh, I have a large group and um, I manage both operations uh, and also originations. And um, it's, uh, it's a growing, it's a growing uh, company still. We're at uh, almost 8 billion assets right now, but um, we're gearing to go up to uh, 10 billion in the next um, year or so. Um, credit unions are under a different uh, um, 
uh, regulation like regulators, um, they call it the National Credit Union Association, NCUA, versus a financial institution, because I also worked at Bank of America before we were under uh, FDIC, so feds would be coming in for audits as well, but uh, credit unions, once you hit that 10 billion mark, you will be under NCUA and FDIC. So we're getting, we're preparing for that. So a lot of uh, meetings, um, again, the higher up in the ladder that you are, um, the lesser, the, the lesser work of the actual, you know, frontline work that you will be dealing with, you will be faced with um, strategy, you, you, you'll be expected to uh, come up with programs. Um, what can you do different? Process improvement. Um, if I can, you know, serious uh, lesson to impart with all of you is, um, you know, all these projects that you're you're doing at school. Um, you know, if anything that can get out of it is the methodology, the the what what is the um, the step by step in process um, management, um, understanding that, and uh, because that will really help you when you get to um, uh, an upper management role. Okay, let me follow Mia since she has decided to. <laughs> My friend uh, Michael. <laughs> that, that's that's the general perceptions of uh, all the business development uh, groups concerning internal audit. Um, we don't. Everything that you do in any organization, either in the bank or in the government or in production, manufacturing, they carry enormous risks. So our job as internal auditors are to ensure that well, first we're carrying uh, minimal risks that are in line with uh, uh, the risk, risk appetite of the organization. That is number one. And that's very critical for us. So I spent most of my time trying to do risk assessment, look at what is going on, if there is any product that is coming up, what risk is it adding to the organization? Because what we, we look at is um, as good as any product could be that could bring in because it is in business that you make money and the higher the risk, the higher the returns. But a little sleep of risk wipe out every gain that you have made over the last 10 years. So we stand there to kind of examine uh, what are the controls around those risks? And how are you managing the controls? Are they effective? Are they not effective? And um, when we see anything, uh, this is where the business development officers, we have to really understand us. When we see anything that is not uh, going on well, we try to really mention that to you, discuss with you, trying to know from your point of view, how do you think you want to control these risks? And um, if what you have as control is not effective enough or it's not strong enough for us, we try to suggest to you uh, what you can do to make the control more effective. Uh, and it is left for you. I don't dictate policies, I don't dabble into policies of the, uh, the business people, but I want to ensure that the bank is secured uh, in all your actions. So if you're doing anything um, that we feel that we need to make a report to management and the, the board audit committee, we do that so that we can protect the bank. And when we protect the bank, we're protecting you and we're protecting ourselves. Because when <clears throat> the whole place collapses, all of us, we, we just have to really go and find something else to do. And if there are no jobs outside there that you can really catch on in time, then your family suffers. The other family of other staff also, we suffer. So basically that is, uh, what I do on my normal day, 
is engaged in meetings, discussions with, uh, discussing with uh, my audit clients to understand uh, some of the things that I don't understand they are doing. I need to ask them to explain to me. Maybe I'm getting them wrong. So I'm not opposed to what they do because if they don't do what they do, the bank will not make money. But I am opposed to you not uh, listening to or to kind of have that understanding with us that we're trying to really look at the risks and uh, we want to make sure that the bank is secure. So that's basically my job. Thank you. Um, Arturo, right. what does your role entail in typical day? Right. Yeah, so um, I work for um, US Bank and I'm part of the commercial real estate division. I'm part of the LA office here and we have a portfolio. I think it's a, it's roughly about like $23 billion. So um, we are always, you know, like Michael said, you know, we're always assessing risk. We have a lot of deals coming in and like part of my job is, you know, being on the um, pre-flights, you know, analyzing, making sure that the bank is, uh, you know, that the, the deals we have, the loans that we have, they're properly servicing, um, they're being properly serviced. You know, we have to ensure that we meet like minimum thresholds for like our shareholders. We need to ensure that, you know, the deals that we have are not risky. So every quarter we're um, modeling, we're having quarterly portfolio reviews uh, on the deals that we have, annual reviews where we like review the properties um, that are securing these loans. Um, annual reviews, we review um, the sponsors on the loans, guarantors, the property itself. So it's just like a bigger quarterly um, report. But again, you know, we're in, we're in the business of like lending money. So we, it's, it's risky, you know, and like Michael said, one little slip and, you know, and especially right now, since we're like in a rising interest rate environment, you know, a lot of these um, loans that we have, you know, um, people, our clients are going to want to, you know, refinance or, you know, how are they going to exit the deal? So we have to, see, right, like if we refinance, you know, and they're not cash flowing enough, you know, and we, the interest rate adjusts, like is, what, where does that leave us? Do we, do they have to give us, you know, do they have to put some more equity in the deal to make sure to offset, you know, the losses that they're having? We're a pretty conservative bank. So um, we are primarily like a cash flow lender and really heavy like relationship, relationship based. So, you know, we have to make sure that we're covering um, like our end um, very, very well. So my job is a lot of um, pretty much like portfolio management, you know, creating uh, valuation models, um, underwriting, um, researching on, you know, the systems that we have, um, just to make sure that that we're good, that our portfolio is covered. Thank you. So it sounds like risk is a common theme um, amongst a lot of yeah. your positions. Um, and this question is more for Veronica and Arturo as a recent graduates of the Master's of Science and Finance program. Um, as a recent graduate, are there any differences that you see working in the finance industry versus what you've learned in university? Because, you know, our students are studying right now and you all are in the workplace. And what have you seen any differences of what you've learned versus being in the workplace? Um, I can speak a little to that. I wouldn't say differences per se. I will say that. Um, but this, this, this is what I tell everyone. School is just a foundation. You learn the foundations needed so that you can build on top of that. So um, I learned a lot of uh, helpful information um, going into this position that I'm in now. I learned, I, I'm using fact tracking, uh, recalling information that I learned in grad school. But I wouldn't say, and I don't th I think everyone here can agree with me, even in, as an undergrad, you didn't learn everything you were going to learn. You only learned a small percentage of it. And it's um, enough as to work as a foundation. And once you actually get into the field, wherever it is that you end up going, that's where you really build the solid um, layer on top of the foundation. And you really get uh, to really know what it is that you need to do for the job and uh, really get familiar, more familiar with the field more than anything. So I wouldn't say differences um, exactly. I'd say that I learned uh, the foundation. I didn't learn everything, of course, because it's impossible to cover all of that. There's so many different options in finance uh, that you can go many different routes. But, um, but I did learn um, the foundations and I don't know if that adjusts your question. Yes, right. anything to add Arturo? Yeah, so I agree with Veronica. I feel that um, school does a great job in, um, you know, you're taking these classes and 
you're learning how to model, you're learning a lot of like conversational things too, but also like technical skills. So once you go into the, you know, into the actual, into your job, one thing that I remember um, when I was at UCI as an undergrad and I got my first internship and I asked them, I'm like, hey, is there anything that I should review? And they're like, no, pretty much everything that we need you to do, we're going to like teach you here, you know? So yeah, there's things that you learn, but like job specific things, you know, yeah, you're expected to come in with, you know, like learning how to like de- um, create valuations, DCF models, like understand like finance things and economic things, especially if you're going into finance related jobs. But I feel like a lot of the things that are, you know, like processes, how to use the systems at work, that's all going to come to you once you're there. Great, great. Um, so a lot of these students are probably going to be on the job hunt soon. And what, um, what advice do you have for them in terms of standing out during the application process, whether that's the resume, cover letter, interviewing, networking, um, Mia, like I'm sure you've had to hire a bunch of people, like what, what stand, what, what advice can you give, um, to these students? My advice when you go, first of all, your resume, brush it up. Um, don't make it too long. Uh, you know, a lot of managers, they just really glance at it and it's like quick reading, right? Uh, especially if uh, the manager has a lot of, you know, the hiring manager is in upper level and they don't have a lot of time, you know, bullet points is nice. Um, uh, highlight in the beginning what you have to offer for the position and why they should select you. Um, Companies nowadays are using tools uh, that are using trigger words that will, you know, system, system will actually pick the, the, the um, resumes that will be presented to the hiring manager. So um, adjust your, um, your resume to make sure that those keywords are in your resume that, that way you can, uh, you have a better chance of at least getting in front of the hiring manager. Um, and then for the interview, um, a lot of companies are using a star system interview, uh, situation, and then um, action, and then the results. So basically what it is, is they'll ask you specific questions such as if they wanna know how you are, how you work as a team, or uh, you know, how, do, how do you provide good service to, uh, to a customer or what have you, they'll ask you specific questions, uh, something in line with, tell me about a time when you, had, when you made a mistake. Um, what was the mistake? What did you do and what was the outcome? Um, make sure that you get to the specific and it's okay to think back and believe it or not, the hiring managers can sense if you're lying. Don't say things that, you know, that what you would do because that's what they want to hear. Tell them your experience and they'll know that, that, that you're sincere, that you're really telling them your background. And it can be even personal experience. Like I made a mistake, you know, I did this and this is what I did. They're asking that because they want to see your um, thinking, your thought process, your thinking process, Um, you know. uh, So um, be confident in your, uh, during the interview, dress properly, uh, you know, um, don't slouch when you're sitting, but, you know, don't be awkward either. Um, you know, just uh, don't sound cocky. You, they're they're going to lose interest in you, but sound confident and, 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 and make sure that, you know, that you convey that you know what you're talking about. Um, prepare. If you can partner with somebody, even somebody that you know at home, to do a mock interview before, before you go to the interview. Being prepared is always better because there is a lot of competitions out there. Um, and um, that's what I would I would suggest and you know and if they ask you um, you know what you're looking for say they offer you the extend the offer and uh, you know they ask you what you're looking for don't just immediately say well I want this it's okay to ask you know um, what the what the uh, salary range is um, and just ask um, you know nicely of course and say you know this this job is important to you as it is very important to me as well, uh, you know, and, and let them know, I would like to think about this, but can you please give me, would it be okay if you give me the, uh, the range for this position? That way you're not, you're not shortchanging yourself. You know what you're worth. Your MBA students, Cal State, Long Beach, you're worth somebody, you're worth something. And when you go to that interview, be confident. 
Now, I, I, the addition that I want to add to what Mia had explained <clears throat> is um, it, it depends on at what, le what level are you at the, uh, the time you are looking for a job. And I want to really kind of give you this, uh, everybody this counsel. Be sure of what you want to do first. What do you want to, where are you heading to? There are quite a lot of rooms in, in the finance industry where you can fix in, but what will make you happy doing? I want to tell you, I can do any other job apart from what I am doing now, because I love, I have been in the banking sector for almost about close to 30 something years, but I love internal auditing. And uh, I have been approached for different kinds of jobs by recruiters and I tell them, I'm sorry, I'm just in a place where I am happy and that is where I want to be. So you need to know, it's not just looking for a job out there because you get to a stage where uh, you're no longer happy, you are burnt out and you may be at the extreme at that time, in which case you are just kind of gambling on anything that is happening around you and you eventually you could destroy your career completely. So in the beginning, let us define, define what you want to do, what you like doing, where do you want to see yourself in the next five years? What do you want to uh, accomplish? So if you can define that, uh, then all that Mia has told us in terms of resume, interview, style and so on, that will work along. But if you really do not know what you want to do, that's a problem you need to solve first. Right. Thank you. Or do yeah, you have Veronica, yeah. anything to add? Yeah, I, um, I completely agree with Michael. I feel that um, it's extremely important to um, know your, your goal, right? Like what you want to achieve, because if you're just going through LinkedIn, applying for just any job, you know, I feel like it, it can kind of be a waste of time you know, because if you need to know what, what you want to get out of these jobs, if, you know, because life is long, you know, and if you're going to start a career somewhere, you know, and if you go into, you know, a certain sector or a certain industry, and then you're like two, three years in, and then you jump over to something else, you know, it's kind of already time that you could have dedicated to, you know, to what you really like. So I feel that it's super important to ask yourself, you know, what you, what are your goals? What are you interested in? You know, what are your strengths? What, where, where, you know, where do you fit in? You know, and I think a great way to do that is um, get going through internships, you know, because the internships, that's pretty much what it is. You know, you're learning about the role, about what the industry is like. So I, I completely agree with that, um, with what Michael said. It, it's great. To, um, it's a, super important to know your, your goal and what you want to get out of the, the roles that you're applying for. Yeah, I just to quickly add and just to um, echo what everyone else has said. I agree with that. I, um, I, it's also important to network, especially once you get to a company um, and to plan ahead. I'm a planner, so I always like to have like a two-year goal, five-year goal. And so um, although I'm fairly new to the company, I already started mapping out where I want to go within the company, within PEMCO. And I, I want to move into the portfolio management team. And so um, specifically working with the Latin American Caribbean region, and so I already reached out to a couple of portfolio managers, account managers, and started connecting with them and just started getting feedback on what it is that I need to do now to be where I want to be in two years, five years. And um, I got some great information. People are really open to help and um, to share what they know and their, their trajectory throughout the company. They're so willing to share with you and to help you get there. And so that's also really important. Um, I know that not everyone is a planner doesn't plan that way, but I think especially now that you've invested your time and your money in grad school, and now you're moving into a different phase of your life, it's really important to start really mapping out what it is that you want. And you're not going to be a hundred percent sure, right? There's no way of knowing, especially um, depends. Like sometimes you get to a company and it's not really a great fit. It's not really what it was meant to be, but it's good to just have some general plans, uh, general goals, and then have more specific goals once you get to the company where you want to be or get your foot in the door. 
All really great information shared um, in terms of the application and just thinking for the future. Um, so this ends 